Okay, so yesterday we talked about um, a little bit of that self-sabotage. The uh, letting yourself become shut down in a, in a way that you don't ride when you're given the opportunity because you're worried about something. I really want us to make sure we're taking the time to really honor those feelings because chances are you're not going to be able to just have one conversation with somebody and everything's taken care of. It's really important to really understand and get to the root of those, um, those concerns, those fear of failures, you know, perfectionism, all that kind of stuff. It's really important to get to the root of that so you can actually start um, el not necessarily eliminating them, but to start moving forward and healing and finding new ways to think and process. So I want you to meditate today. Now, if you're new to meditating, that's fine. Um, it's, a, it's something that is, I guess, just a good practice. It is easy to do, but it's hard to do it well. Um, and you might find yourself getting distracted, but I want you to give it a try anyway. I want you to find um, 10 to 20 minutes somewhere along your day today. And I really want you to pick one of those feelings. So try to reflect back on a time where, you know, you could have went for a ride, but you decided to do something else. So maybe it was housework. Let's, we'll just use that as an example. You decided you needed to do housework um, instead of riding because you were really behind. And then you kind of sat with that for a bit and you realize that you're, um, you're concerned about, you know, your husband thinking that you're a lousy housewife and a lousy mom and whatever else because your house is a mess. You know, let's say you have this weird thought in your head and that's what you think. When you meditate, I want you to really try to dig deep and figure out why you feel like that. Chances are you're going to have memories surface and if you allow them to, memories are going to surface to really start to be able to connect the dots on why you think this way, why having the house clean all of the time is so important. Now this might go back to that's how your mom did it, so that's how you feel you should do it. Maybe you heard somebody um, say some snide remark to your mom once about the you know, your house being a mess and you've seen that it hurt her feelings and so you never wanted that to happen to you. Maybe you've seen some TV show. Maybe you heard, you know, it doesn't really matter what it is. Maybe you were picked on all the time for being a slob when you were a kid because your your bedroom was always really chaotic and messy and whatever. When you can start figuring out the why you have this need for being um, perfect in this area, your house needs to be clean all the time or whatever, when you start figuring out the why, then you're going to be able to start diffusing the power within that memory and that's going to affect your life today. It's actually quite, quite fascinating because our brains don't, our brains don't care about the timeline. The memories that we experienced as an infant to now, they are all stored in our brain. Now, some are stored in files that are like way back when and we don't really remember them because they're not really that important, but they're stored there. They're in our mind. The emotions around that memory are still there and will always be there. But the really cool thing is, is when you have a memory of even when you were two years old and you don't remember it, that stored emotion around that memory is still going to be in there. And so if it's a negative emotion, when something happens that makes you, you know, has brings a, a similarity to that experience back when you were two or six or 10 or 12, that really negative energy, that negative emotion that revolved around that experience is going to surface. And it's going to affect you right now. And so when you can start going back and identifying those core moments that started you down this path to my house needs to be perfect before I am worthy of going for a ride, then you can start sending love to those core moments and being like, 
I was six. I was doing the best that I knew how in that moment, you know, where I, I deserved compassion there. I deserved empathy there. Um, you can, you can look at it from, I guess, like a bird's eye view and see how irrational it was to feel so horrible because someone teased you that your room was a mess. Maybe your friend came over after school one day and they're like, and they totally made you feel like a horrible person because your room was a mess. As an adult, you can go and you can look at that memory and you can even envision this. This is actually, um, a lot of practices do this in like therapy sessions is while you're meditating, you can envision yourself standing there in that situation. So you're an adult in your bed, in your six-year-old's bedroom with your six-year-old self, with your friend. And as that friend starts picking on you, you can actually come to your own defense as an adult and be like, hey, come on now, little Sally. That's not a very nice thing to say. It's just toys on the floor and clothes that need to be picked up. You don't need to be mean about it. She's trying her best. Maybe she had a really busy day yesterday and she didn't get a chance to tidy up her room. And so you can actually then defend yourself and it actually helps take away the power. Now, sometimes this, you know, that might sound a little silly to you, but I know in a book that I read, um, oh, I choose to remember the name, uh, The Tao of Fully Feeling. Amazing book. And he talks a lot about that, where he talks to his younger self, you know, because our younger self is kind of the root of all of our big core emotions. It's how we experience things as a kid. And when you go back as a defender, as a protector in those moments, to protect your younger self, then all of a sudden you weren't alone in that moment anymore. And those words won't hurt you as much because you knew you had a protective person right there with you. And it just really helps to remove the power. So take some time while you're meditating. See if you can find some of those core memories that are maybe affecting you to this day and start to um, send yourself like your protective self to those memories and defend yourself and make it okay make whatever you are feeling send empathy to that it's just like hey I, I see you feel like you're a failure and you're imperfect you're an amazing person and you're doing the best that you can send love to your younger self whether that was last week or 30 years ago, it doesn't matter. You can still send love to that moment of time and compassion. And that's going to really start letting you heal from those moments so that it's easier to start letting some of that little stuff go, that perfectionism, that, you know, fear of failure, fear of being judged. It's going to just make growing and evolving that much easier. I would really love it if you wanted to share with us, um, not maybe not necessarily one of your core moments maybe that's too vulnerable for you but maybe even just to share share something that your protector told your younger self you know like hey you are an amazing person and you're doing the best that you can just give us a little bit of dialogue of what your protective self said to your younger self in one of those moments all right see you later